Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. In the past, I've done some craft videos, but I wanted to show you some activities or games that you could play with the kiddos this year. And these are for all different types of ages and groups. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. It is such a good holiday get to get booked as a babysitter. Most families are looking for babysitters so they can go on a date night on Valentine's Day. So this is our time to shine. I wanted to get together some activities for you to prepare for that night and things that you can get ideas from as well. There's something in here for every age, so you will have something for whatever age group you're working with that night. So the first one is for the young ones. We have a heart shape recognition um, paper. So this is just an example. If I were to do this, I would have made it bigger and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but what it's basically doing is matching sizes with sizes. So this is a shape recognition for hearts, but also size recognition as well. So um, we've got different size hearts matched up to different size, like uh, drawings or templates, basically. However, if this is a bigger piece of paper, if I was doing it with my kiddos, it would be a bigger, different, bigger piece of paper and I would make a spot for each one of these hearts so that there was a spot on the paper for every heart um, and they'd have to sort it out and place them. So that is basically the first one is shape and size recognition. I have found, I've made these hearts, um, but they came from my Etsy um, game. You can find this on Etsy, but this is my shape recognition game. So my monkey shape recognition each monkey has a shape on their belly and there are shapes in here that go with these monkeys. So basically they have to find the monkey with the shape and match all these shapes to the monkeys. Now, a quick little tip is um, some of these are hard for younger kids to recognize. Squares and rectangles are hard to di differentiate. In the, for, in the beginning for younger kids. So what I like to do is make sure that I have shapes that are completely different from each other. So star, heart, and circle I usually start with. Then I throw in triangle, then we try square. And then once they're getting the hang of it all, I throw in a rectangle. So those you can find over on Etsy, but that's where I got the hearts to um, trace my, my size recognition paper. Alrighty, so for our next game, it is pattern recognition. So here I have a just a construction piece of paper with a heart drawn out on it. Um, I also have these dab inks. They're used for mostly, I've seen them used for bingo, but I really enjoy using them for arts and crafts. And my kids absolutely love using these. Um, so pattern recognition, what I'll do is I will actually take these and start a pattern on the heart. Once I have finished that pattern, I then give them the dab inks and they finish off the rest of the heart with that pattern. You can make it as difficult or as simple as you need. So if you just want to do three colors and you just do red, blue, green, and you want them to continue red, blue, green, red, blue, green, that's perfectly fine. Um, for my older kids, I like to make it harder. So I like to do red, red, oh, 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 you know what? I like to make sure that I put something underneath of it um, before I do this because it does bleed through to the other side. So um, a news piece of newspaper, another construction paper is fine. Okay, so back to what I was saying. So you could do red, red. I'll throw a blue in there. And then green. We'll do yellow, yellow, orange. So that'll be the pattern. And then I'll hand these over and I expect them to finish the heart. Um, so they'll go around and finish the complete heart with the Daba dots. Again, you can make this as simple as you want if it's just red, blue, green, red, blue, green. Maybe it's even two colors, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. Um, whatever it is, you can make it for, you can cater it to the kid that you're um, working with. So this is the candy heart. They have all the sayings on them. I'm sure you use these in school when you were younger. Um, so I poured them out into a bowl. There's a couple different games you can play with them. So this 
is a relay race, and you can play it in a couple different ways. So either you can have them hold four or five on a spoon, and like an egg, egg run, basically. They have to run back and forth and dump them as much as they can, um, and whoever does it first wins. But if you have only one kid, um, what I like to do is I like to actually put them in a bowl and set the bowl on one side of the roof and the other bowl on the other. And then what they have to do is they have to scoop up a heart, one heart in the beginning, and then put it in the bucket across the room. And then the next time they come, they have to pick up two hearts and then put it in the bucket. The next round, they pick up three hearts. That way they're, they're counting, they're actually thinking about what they're doing, and um, that way they're focused on what they're doing. It's not just a mindless, boring back and forth. Because uh, when it's one kid, there's no real challenge, um, and it can get boring. So I have them count them out. I do let the kids eat these. So if I am having them play a game where these candies are falling on the floor or whatnot, I just make sure that I put some of these aside for later after all the activities that they can eat that I know are clean, that didn't fall on the ground. Um, so I make sure that there are some set aside if I am planning for them to eat some of these later. So that is the first game. It's like the egg, egg race where you put an egg on the spoon and you run around, um, but this time it's just hearts. So, all right, the next one is kind of the same, but it is uh, with a popsicle stick. So you will put these hearts on one end of the popsicle stick. Usually you start with four because that can be difficult. And what you're going to do is have them put the other end of the popsicle stick in their mouth and again, it is a relay race. See, I can't even have them balance. And they relay race around the house. This is not going to have them running because it's a balance game. Oh my goodness. So there's no ru real running in this, which is my favorite part of it, is there's, like they're not gonna run into anything. There's no breaking anything. You're just quick walking. So then they put it in their mouth and they walk around the house in a relay. And if it falls over, they gotta pick them up, stack them and start again. So I'm not good at this. <laughs> However, I've seen some of my kids, they're pretty good at it. So it is doable, doable. All right, anyways, the next game is kind of the same thing, but instead of on a um, pop school stick in your mouth you have to stack the hearts on their ends so usually what i have them do is see who can stack the highest in under a minute if it falls over they can start again but i give them a minute to stack as high as they can and we race that way but this one's a difficult one at two. They have to be careful with their hands. It's a f good fine motor skill, but sometimes they um, also ask to switch out some hearts because they're not, the hearts aren't shaped correctly for them to stack them, which is fine. But um, I think the highest that we've gotten up to is five or six. I think it was only five, but let me tell you, it's not an easy game. Anyways, so that's for my older group, the ones who like to be competitive and everything. Also, if they're getting frustrated with that or you find that they can't do that, just have them stack them like they were stacking them on the popsicle stick. And again, see how high you can get them up. This way it's a little easier. Again, they still have to be very patient and careful with their hands not to knock it over but it's a lot easier than stacking them the other way so this next one is a lot of fun as well um, it involves some spit so what I like to do is make sure there's enough for everybody to have their own there's they have their own straw and everything um, so we're not swapping spit um, but basically what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to suck up the the heart by the straw make their make it a suction so that they can move it to the next bowl over so, and again, if I rush it, I'm not gonna be able to do it. So, 
So there's, again, a relay race or you have them do it in a certain amount of time if there's only one kid. So that is another game that you can play with the candy hearts. Again, I do like to put some aside because that way I know they're clean. I know that they haven't been on the floor. I know that they haven't been slobbered on. Um, and that way that there are treats at the end of the activities and games. I hope this sparked some ideas for you. You can take these ideas, make them your own, whatever you want to do with it. But I hope that you've got some good ideas for when you go and babysit for Valentine's Day. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. And I will see you in the next video.